If we look at the sizes for the Automoblox tire, we can see we need a um, 1.65 inch diameter um, circle. And then we're going to come in a hundred thousandths. And then with well, a rib, when we get to the rib, that's 30 thousandths. So those are the major dimensions we need to start with. And then thickness, uh, it doesn't matter. We'll make it look relatively right because I don't remember what it is right now. Uh, and it really it doesn't matter. It's, it does not need to be to exact dimensions. It's just a visual representation. So if we go over to Inventor, let's start a sketch. We'll pick our plane that we want to put it on. And we'll wait for Inventor to spin up. There we go. So we'll drop our circle in. And we want that to be 1.65. So there's our circle. So there's the circle. We're going to use a different command that we used before. We could go in and make another circle and then, and then dimension it. But we're going to use offset. We're going to pick this circle here. And we're going to wait on Inventor because it's being really, really slow. And we'll wait some more. And I just canceled out of it because it was being so slow. So we'll hit the, we'll hit the offset again. We'll click it. And then you'll notice that it has a number there. We just, how much far do we want to offset it? In this case, 0.1. And then there we have our two circles. So we'll finish the sketch. We'll say extrude. It will find the sketch. And this is the great part about waiting on Inventor. It takes forever sometimes. And do we, is it waiting on us to pick a profile or is it still thinking about it? We'll hang out here some more, see what's going on. There we go. Okay, so that looks a little bit thick. Let's go 0.75. That looks about right. Say OK. And then we will let that churn and think about it a little bit. Don't know why the computer is running so slow. That's what happens with Inventor every now and then. And there we go. All right. So now we're going to, now if you look at the instructions, the instructions talk about mm, editing the sketch and sharing the sketch. It's completely confusing. Um, I don't like that part from PLTW. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to just basically start a new sketch. I like to do one feature with one sketch as if I can humanly possibly do it. So I'm going to start a 2D sketch. I'm going to say I'm going to put it on this face right here. And then if we go back and look at what we have, we would need this face to space this off four degrees. Okay, and that's really all we need, four degrees on either side. That's eight degrees total. And then we need to be 30 thousandths high. Okay, so that's that's what we see right there. So we'll go back over here. We have, we're in our, so we're, I'm just going to draw a line, 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 dimension from here. I need to put a vertical line in so I can go to my my center or to my y-axis. I'm going to go ahead and pre-select it, hit the hidden line, turn that to a hidden line. And then now I can dimension between here and here and then say four degrees. And I can dimension from here to here, four degrees. So that's eight degrees total, four degrees. And then what I want to do is I want to project project some geometry or I could so I need to project the geometry. So this is in a different sketch. Okay, so this is in a different feature. It's not in this sketch. But if I go to project geometry, then it's going to bring this edge into this sketch. And so it's yellow just says, hey, that's projected geometry. So what I'm going to do now, and I can use that, all right, what I want to do is I want to offset that. So we'll use the offset command again. We'll click it. I want this to be 30 thousandths. So now it's blue because it's not a projected line. And I could go and I could trim this. Now occasionally when you have this feature, all right, we're going to extrude another feature onto a feature and they share the same lines. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it gives you problems merging the two features together. So we have this extrusion one, we're going to have an extrusion two that we're going to pattern. Sometimes if we have a line on top of a line, 
those patterns, especially if you're patterning, they tend to break down. So what I like to do, and this is just best practice, this would probably work, but what I like to do is I got to go in and say, you know what, I'm going to offset this again. And I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to do something small like 15 thousandths, okay? Just enough to where it's inside here, and then when it goes to add the two bodies together, all right, so it goes to take this tire, the gray tire that we've already done, and we add in this little square section, then it's the two objects are interfering with one another. They're, they're, they're linked together already, and it just makes the whole addition of to adding the two bodies together makes it much more smooth, okay? You don't have to do that. I just think it, may, it saves you problems in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I'm going to trim this away. Once my trim command wakes up, I'll trim this away. We'll trim this away. We're going to go here and trim that. And I'm going to go here and trim that. Trim and trim. And not certain why that broke loose, but we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now, now you'll notice we turn green here, and I'm not exactly certain why we turn green. So let's pick on it and pull on it, and you'll see that we're still four degrees, um, but we're no, we're no longer four degrees to the center line. So I can drag this out, and this line will still be four degrees to this to the y-axis. But you'll notice that I don't have a width set. Because before, what was going on is that line was tied to the center point. So all I have to do, drop a line in there, drop a line in there, okay? And then I can turn, select those, hold down the control key, I can select multiple things. While I'm doing it, I'm going to make this a hidden line too. So I'm going to select those three things, one, two, three, and I'm going to say hidden line. And then what I can do is I can say, you know what, I want these to be collinear, okay? So this... And this should be on the same line. And that's going to lock it in place. Do you notice how this went from, from green, yellow, green, uh, to blue? So it is, it is um, locked in place. It has been uh, dimensioned. It has been constrained. That's the word I'm looking for. It's been constrained. So I'm going to say this line, this line is collinear. It keeps that point from wandering. Okay. And that gets the design intent away. I want that design intent to be locked in place. Okay. So that is done. Okay. I can finish the sketch. I can go ahead and extrude it. Now in this case, I don't want to extrude this way. I want to reverse it. And I want it to go up to, and I want to select two, and then I will pick the face that I want it to go to. I want it to go to this face right here. And so I hit OK. And I cut it. OK, that's, I forgot to switch it. So right click, and we'll wait on Inventor. Right click, Edit Feature. And we can change that from a cut to an extrude. And then now we have the part. So now all we need to do is pattern that. So I'm going to do a feature pattern. So we're in the 3D model. We're going to go to circular. All right, I'm going to pick the feature, which is extrusion 2. I'm going to pick the rotation axis, which is the axis that's attached to this curve here. OK, and I want 15 of those over 360 degrees. There it is. Hit OK. Now I have my 15. So very, very nice. Okay. Now the second part is the harder part of this. That was That's relatively easy. You've done that before. Now we need to go back in. And we need to add this rib that runs all the way around the outside. So we're going to use a revolve. And we're going to use some project, projected geometry. And we're going to run this rib all the way around. Okay, So if we know if we're going to do that, then we have to start with a plane that's 90 degrees all right, to this face here. And we have those. If we click into origin over here, we have several planes that are 90 degrees to that one. This one or this one are both 90 degrees to this front plane. So we can pick either one of those. Let's pick that one. We'll pick the YZ plane. And then I can say, you know what, I need a sketch. All right, and you'll notice that it turns it. We're now 90 degrees to that, but I can't really see if I start to draw things in here. All right, I can't really see that line because my object, it's inside my object. So what I can do is I can, let's see, is it right click? Yeah, right click, 
slice graphics. And now what that's going to do is slice the graphics out of my way so I can see exactly what my sketches that I'm drawing are doing. All right, so you can see that we've sliced into that. When we finish sketch, that will go away. So we'll turn this back normal. Um, actually, it'll be a little bit easier if we can do it this way. So I need to make a, a revolve that goes all the way around. So I don't need this line that I drew here. That was just to show you that you can't see it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to project geometry. Okay, and I want to project this geometry onto this plane. All right, and that sets that sets the outer edge of that. And then I'm going to project this geometry onto there. And then I can project this. And I think that should be overlapping. Let's delete this and that way you can see it. All right, so you'll see that that is attached there. So you can see this slight here, and that gives us this point right here. All right, and maybe that will be that might be a slightly easier thing to choose. So I can I can go ahead and delete that, and then I'll put that back in. So we'll use that in the intersection, and basically that shows us where the this surface meets the plane that we're currently drawing on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle here. We want to make certain that. We don't inadvertently attach it to any geometry. That's where it tries to highlight. So if I do that again, as I move this around, you see how it tries to snap to things? All right, I can hold down the Alt key, and that will make it not select. Is it Alt key? Uh, yeah, I think it's the Alt key. All right, it makes it not select anything to be uh, bound to. All right, so what we need to do is we need to say, you know what? I need this point right here. So we're going to dimension this point and the inside of this point to be a certain distance high. In this case, it will be 30 thousandths. All right, so that is now 30 thousandths high. Now all we need to do is center it up. So what I can do is I can take the, a line from the bottom here, the bottom here, and that will let me get to a midpoint. So while, while I'm here, I'm just going to select these two with the shell down the shift key, select those two turn them into construction lines. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to drag and then hit construction line. So those are all construction lines all right? because we don't need those to be uh, trying to revolve. So now all I need to do okay, is basically give this a height. And then we went 30 thousandths there, so we're going to go 50 thousandths. We just want it to be into this material. Makes it a whole lot easier. All right, we're 30 thousandths high. And now all we need to do is center it up. All right, So we should have a point here that I can place on the midpoint. So just move that around until I get to that green circle. Click it. And then we want this to be, um, to, 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 how wide do we want this to be? Um, I have no idea. It may be in there. We're going to say, uh, we're just going to make up how wide we want it to be. We'll make it look decent. So we're going to say this is going to be, uh, 50 thousandths, what is 50 thousandths? 0.05. We're going to say it's 50 thousandths wide. So all we need to do now is center it up. So to do that, we want to have this defined. I'll just have to go from here to this point and say that's half of that. So I can say 0.05 divided by 2 if I can't do the math in my head. And notice it's all blue. Let's finish the sketch. And then now I'm ready to revolve that. Okay, so that uses a really a whole lot extensive use of the... Um, project command, but it's very, very handy. You should get used to using that. It may be a little bit different way to think about it. So now it has my profile selected. I'm using the revolve command. I'm going to pick my axis, which is the axis of this of this circle here. Is it not going to let me do it now? So I can say, you know what? I'm going to pick the axis that works, not the X, not the Y. Uh, we'll pick the Z axis here. Okay, that's in my origin. And we're going to have it revolve around. And then now you can see that here, because we have this, we projected it. This is not sticking above or below. It's exactly even all right, with all the other stuff. Okay. And there are many ways, and that's the tire complete. There are many, many ways that you could do this. 
All right, this is one way, so I extruded this, and then I, I revolved this. That's one way. If you wanted to make this solid, all right, make make it 30,000, instead of coming down 100,000, come down 130,000, and then you could go in and cut, make a cut, with cut this pocket out, and then pattern that, and then flip it around and make another cut, and then you could do that too. So there's many, many ways to get there. This is just a way that uses uh, something I wanted to, you to practice a little bit, which is the project geometry. So I hope that helps.